Hey, y'all. My name is Bryant Young. Hey, uh, Derek Cheney. Here with the Decent Dads podcast. We just finished up an episode with Eric Lampy. We did. We did. Another uh, great guest of ours. You know, another good friend of, of ours. Mm -hmm. um, you know, has some great stories. Um, a little bit of a trickster for a CPA. You know, he's not the uh, the dyed in the wool like, and one plus one equals two kind of CPA. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. No emotion. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, and he was another first for us. Um, yes, he was. Yeah, so that was fun. First parent with a uh, child with Down syndrome. So yeah. it was uh, it was interesting to talk about that, and it it doesn't stop them at all. I mean, she is just the sweetest kid in the world. Oh, he has all sweetheart. kinds of good stories about her. So yeah. I think you guys will enjoy this one. Um, Absolutely. So without further ado, let's do it. Decent Dads Podcast. Here we go. Good evening, folks, and welcome back to the Decent Dads Podcast. We're here to tell dad jokes, drink coffee, and build a community of dads navigating fatherhood together. I'm Bryant Young, fearless leader, co-host, girl dad, and your friendly local insurance agent based out of Springfield, Missouri. And now, before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he's a six foot three sophomore shooting guard from small town Missouri. He wishes he was a first team All-American, but instead, he's the coolest co-host with the most, the fantastic father of two, and the home loan expert. Folks, put your hands together and welcome the incomparable Mr. Derek Cheney. How are you, Derek? Oh, doing great. During that introduction there, I was thinking, I was like, man, I was like, you should do this during the uh, basketball tournament when it's coming up in a, in a couple months. Does that mean I don't have to play in yeah, the Rotary just, Basketball just Tournament? Because I really don't want to play in the Rotary the Basketball the microphone there and introduce each well, one of probably, us like He'll that. probably pull something halfway through the first game. Yeah, so exactly. That's what I'm... Time for him to, yeah, that's to, true. Historically, I've been very good at pulling things in the first <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many jokes there. We probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, doing great. You know, it, it's always a good day for a good day. It's a good day. Got uh, got our hoppy cop coffee with us. So it's a little more. Again, it's a little more rice based. I yeah. think. Is that how they make this this coffee? Yeah. I mean, some call it the king of coffees. Yeah, the king yeah. of coffees. <laughs> but uh, but it's pretty good stuff. But uh, but we also have a great guest with us today. Mm -hmm. uh, both of us know him pretty well. Oh yeah. Um, Eric Clampy is uh, in our rotary group, um, also in a push-up challenge with yeah, the three of us and some grief. other guys. So if we're looking skinny, that's why. Um, we're thick. But then, uh, <laughs> then too, um, you know, he's uh, he is the generous host of our monthly Premier Poker League that, yes. we, that we have going. So it is a bunch of losers that don't actually know how to play poker. Right. So it's really good. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, and then also too, uh, Eric uh, is our, our first guest that has a, a child with Down syndrome. So yeah. I'm super excited to hear those stories and and, uh, and all your other stories that you have. Uh, but like I said, Brad and I know you pretty well. Mm -hmm. Some of our listeners prolific girl dad folks, mm. prolific. Forgot that part. Yeah. But uh, but some of the other listeners might not know you so well. So if you will, you know, tell us who you are, what you do. Uh, tell us, give us your dad resume. Tell us how many kids you got. You know, what are their ages? Which one's your favorite? And just go from there. All right. Well, I can't figure out which one's my favorite. Yet. I, I, it takes some time for that one. So I'm Eric. Uh, I am a the CFO at the Community Blood Center of the Ozarks, a job I recently took almost a year ago. Congrats um, again. Thanks. Yeah, buddy. Thanks. I uh, loved my old job. I was at a CPA firm doing taxes and the like. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know that love is the right word. I don't think any accountant <laughs> loves their job. Do they really? I love my clients. There you go. There clients. you go. Now you're talking. So, now you're talking. That's a whole other yeah. story. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I love my clients. Uh, but, yeah, I just want to spend more time at home. Even when I was home, I want to be more engaged at home, spend mm -hmm. more time with the family. So I nice. um, kind of did a little change of the pace. So the work now is busy from 8 to 4.30. Then go home, and I can focus on the kids. We're at Whitlock, awesome. you know, the – the work was all day, every day, it seems like, just sure. to stay on top yeah. of things. And that's just the way it is in that industry. So Especially during tax yeah, season, right? Exactly. Like the several five 60, months worth of yeah. crazy hours. 50, 70 hours a week of work. And, um, so, yeah, two girls, Avery, she's 11. Um, she has Down syndrome, but um, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, so funny. Uh, Elena, she's eight, and she is she loves making jokes, telling jokes. So she's kind of like me. Uh, she hasn't quite perfected the skill yet, like I have, but she's working on it. <laughs> Man, I can't wait for that uh, that dad joke here at the end of the yeah. End and of, of course, there. you've also got a great better half as well. Yeah, it's true. My wife Amanda, she's amazing. Amanda, you and Amanda were like two of the first people to meet my daughter because you guys were one of the first people on the meal train mm -hmm. when Elsie came through. Oh. So they they were I didn't know that they were ding donging on the front door mm -hmm. like within the first week or so that Elsie was at home. So it was pretty oh, cool. cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, so 
you've told us that you haven't really watched the show other than Dave's episode because you wanted to make sure you were coming into this fresh. So we do have a couple of things that we do every single week. Um, first and foremost, we start our episode normally with Tantrum of the Week. Okay. Um, if you have anything fun or anything, is any, have you been dealing with any tantrums? I mean, you've got young kids just like the rest of us. Have you yeah. had any this week? Yeah, uh, I've got one from New Year's, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. So uh, friends of ours have a big party. I got some friends from college up in St. Louis. So they always have a big New Year party. So it's uh, friends and family and even the kids come. The kids play, have a great time. So our kids are great. They stayed up till one or two in the morning, which was surprising. Did they really? Yeah, Holy yeah they crap. were up all night long. They were brave having a good man. time. I was like, you know, <laughs> brave like, dude. My kids would yeah. not do well at one or two in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I can already tell you that. So we get back to the. We're staying at the friend's house. We yeah. get back. He's got one bed, and then we got like little mats on both sides, or one one side of the bed for the girls. So Lena goes lay down. Well, Avery's gonna roll over on my poppet, and it's gonna wake me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> my poppet. It's like, well, then go sleep on the other side of the bed. What? I want to sleep on this side of the bed. Avery, can you sleep on this side? No, I'm right here. I want to sleep right here. So finally, it's two in the morning. I'm like, oh, I'm done with this. I'll sleep on the floor. You guys take the bed. Wait, did so people? If people can't tell with you sitting down, you're six seven. Yes. Yeah, so well, I wish I was six six four. Okay, six, but four. still, you're a gigantic a human being. Guy. So <laughs> I can't imagine that you fitting on a child's pad was yeah. a, was a good fit. No, no, legs are hanging off. The whole <laughs> uncomfortable pillow. But then she's like, No, you'll be mad at me. I'll sleep on the floor. I'm like, Okay, if you want to sleep on the floor, that's fine. And yeah, she would not. She wanted every on the other side. She would not move herself. She's still in a fit. I'm like, fine. So finally, get her in bed. I'm on the floor. So I wake up the next morning. I can't sleep on the floor on a no. kid's mattress anymore. It was rough. Well, yeah, <laughs> so, I can only imagine. That sounds I'm like still, a nightmare. <laughs> I'm still popping and creaking. But I, yeah, the weeks and weeks later, I totally yeah. understand. What do you have this week? Do you uh, have a good one? That's like such a kid thing. The roll over on my poppet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, that's great. Uh, well, mine actually has to do with uh, kind of like bedtime uh, as well too. Um, so that's so funny. So does mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I mentioned on here before. Uh, went through potty training. Pr- you know, pretty much uh, got that that nail down now so uh, bed bedtime well that's just with one of them the other one no, well not. yeah i understand um but uh but yeah bedtime um so we, we take liam uh we always go through the same bed bedtime routine you know say all the same stuff so he like knows when we're about ready to walk out of the room you know and so we say our affirmations and then you know i'm like love you bud sleep tight and right before i say that he's always like my booty hurts i need to go potty and so i'm like <laughs> All right, dude. I'm like, let's go. So we get up. Ooh, my booty hurts. <laughs> right. There's a whole story yeah, there. That's literally what my kid says before, when he needs to go potty. But uh, anyway, so we get him up. We go we go potty. And he always does. He always goes pee that first time, you know, yeah. which is great. Um, and so, all right, let's go back to bed. So we put him back in bed. All right, bud. Love you. Night. Walk out of the room. Like, less than five minutes. He's like, my booty hurts. And he go potty again. Okay, so we grab him, set him on the potty. I don't he, believe He you. doesn't go, <laughs> right? And it's like this back and forth of this for probably like five to seven times each night. Mm-hmm. And the only reason he's doing it after that first time is because he just want, he doesn't want to go to sleep, mm-hmm. right? He just wants to hang out. And, uh, and then, you know, mom and dad, we're getting a little more short each time yep. <laughs> he does this, right? And so he's setting, each, each time he's sitting there on the, on the potty, well, he doesn't want to get off of it. He wants to sit, sit on there longer. He just wants longer, to hang out. Right? And so then it eventually gets to, <laughs> we're like, all right, you got one minute to sit on the potty. And then you're going to bed. You're staying in bed. Right? Yep. I will lock you in there right. if I have to. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and so, but the thing is, he still goes potty on that little, like, training potty thing. And it has handles down here on the side of the seat. And so when we tell him he has one minute left, he, like, latches onto those handles. Of course he does. And he doesn't let go. Of course. And we go to yeah. pick him up. He's like, no, I'm still going potty. And so we're trying to pick him up, and, like, the whole potty's coming, coming up with him. off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I will take you and this potty to your bed if I have to. <laughs> like, Full happening. or not, it's going to your so, room. Oh, man, yeah, right now that's a battle every night is <sighs> uh, is that. And, uh, and uh, again, eventually we just have to get, like, stern with him, which you feel sure. bad, right? Because mm-hmm. – you don't want to scare him to where he doesn't go potty, right? And to where he has access. Yeah, that's absolutely. the thing. Like now he sleeps like in his underwear at night, which is awesome. Um, yeah, and we killer. don't want him to have accidents, but at the same time too, it's like we know he's just doing this to stay up longer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, it's constant battle. Yeah, well, and it's and the the constant battle thing is actually what I had to talk about this week. I did my first like extended single dadding over 
the previous weekend. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, you told me about that. Yeah, Liv yeah. left on a bachelorette party, um, and she went and stayed with some family in Nashville for a couple days, and then had the bachelorette party over the weekend. So I had else Thursday morning through Sunday evening, and so that was the first like extended stay, mm-hmm. only single dadding uh, uh, event that else and I had had, and I learned the importance of keeping the schedule that she is used to, particularly when it comes to taking naps. Like, Mm. she and I were going for walks, and she and I were out, like, playing around and stuff, and I look up, and she's normally asleep at daycare just afternoon. Like, they have lunch at, like, 11.30, and, and like by 12 o'clock or very soon thereafter, they're laying down. Well, I look up and it's two in the afternoon. Trying to be that cool dad. Do all the fun oh, stuff, God, right? dude. It was a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Seriously. And, and like I look up and I'm like, oh, else we got to go to bed. It's time. Yeah. And so I go get the bottle and I get the, you know, the sleeping bag and everything. I do all the things correctly. Refuses. Yeah. Refuses yep. to sleep. And, and we struggled with sleep with Elsie for a really long time. And we did the sleep training thing, but I'm still, frankly, I'm still a wuss and I can't hardly handle that stuff. <laughs> it, it doesn't so, get any easier. <laughs> oh my God, it's just the worst. But it got to the point, and I have a screenshot of it on my phone, and I might even try to put it in the episode right here. Um, Elsie fell asleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, got our van away. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, Elsie. Yeah, no, not the money maker. Um, Else had fallen asleep crying because I had put her to bed, and finally was like, "Okay, I just got to leave you in here. I don't know what else to do." She fell asleep, screaming, crying, with her arms on the side of the crib, standing up. She was oh. standing up, asleep, with her head on the edge of the crib and just dead asleep but just laying there with her head and did I you fu- move her i did like yeah, I, yeah. I went in there and i like kind of picked her up and she knew it was me and i laid her back down and she was still half asleep and so she ended up falling back to sleep <laughs> but yeah stubborn as an ox um, stubborn as a mule whatever the line is um, i don't know where she got that from it's not that that's can't be you know, it, yeah or or dad no, uh yeah so not that not, that, not at all but um so yeah, that was my experience. The single dadding. Um, uh, stick to a schedule, folks. Stick to a schedule because um, uh, it was a real problem for Dad and Elsie over the weekend. <laughs> I believe it. That's funny. I'm gonna be single dadding this coming weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you got a big one coming up. Uh, so I might have to steal some some tips. Well, if they tricks. fall asleep standing up, uh, don't let maybe, that happen. <laughs> maybe maybe some some dad hacks from yeah. you. Uh, yeah, I do have you know. a dad hack for that one. What do you got? A what kid you is your fine eating cereal. Every meal, every day. So yeah. <laughs> they don't complain. They don't, com- you know, the wife, well, they eat their lettuce. I don't know. They had fruit, fruity pebbles. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> They're happy with it. Right. They like the sugar. So yeah, they got food in them. Yeah, exactly. It's some kind of food. So, yeah. That's hilarious. That is great. Yeah. Uh, did you have a dad hack this week? Let's just go right into them. We already started talking about it. I did, but that made me think of this meme that I saw on Facebook like just last night. And it is like, I don't know how toddlers do it. Like they'll wake up at 5 a.m be crazy all day you know probably not even have a nap eat two blueberries and you know some candy or cereal whatever it is and be bouncing off the walls and then 8 8 p.m rolls around and they're still just bouncing going gangbusters 100 miles an hour and then you're over here as a parent like i just want to go to sleep and they're like no i don't want to go to sleep watch me bounce on my bed mom you know it's like (laughs) that is the truth though like how do they survive sometimes two blueberries and seven uh, Cheerios, and we're good to go. Right, yep. uh, but but yeah, no. Uh, as far as dad hat goes, uh, I was actually kind of struggling uh, trying to think of one um, today. Um, but then uh, we sat in church this morning, um, and uh, and Pastor Brad he uh, he hit me with a good one, or not just me, but the whole. No, he he, whole, he reached out directly. He, you yeah. know, I feel like it felt like he did a little bit there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, I got something for all all you dads out here. And it's a little a little touchy feely, and he's like. Uh, continue to tell your kids that you love them and that you're proud of them, even when they get older. Sure. He's like, right now, if you have little kids, right, it's super easy because they're super cute, super cuddly. So, yeah. you know, you tell them you love them, proud of them all the time. But he's like, even when they get older, he's like, it's going to get awkward. Mm. He's like, just know. He's like, I have older kids. He's like, it's awkward. But he's like, just keep telling them that because he's like, that's more likely whenever they need to hear it more is when sure. they get older versus when they're, you know, two, three years old. So. That's just, good. Just, just keep doing it. And, With the uh, positive affirmations. I mean, yeah. that just goes right back into what Dave was talking about. Yeah. Like, keep and, the positive talk up. And don't uh, don't stop doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I heard a... I heard a joke that I don't remember the like the exact wordage of it the other day, but it was, you know, a, a, it was a guy telling a story about he was a he was seeking out other fathers of daughters 
for advice and one of the ones that he went to was the biggest man whore friend of his that he could find <laughs> um, and he said well what do I do to make sure my daughter isn't interested in or doesn't end up with somebody like you and he goes well tell them you love them <laughs> because they need to know what it sounds like when somebody actually loves them oh, so that yeah. they can differentiate yeah, yeah, yeah. it from when somebody like me tells them that and I'm full of shit that's a good point <laughs> So yeah. I was like, oh, that's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. So that goes hand in hand. There's maybe that's the part that Pastor help me his his first name again. Uh, Brad. Pastor Brad didn't yeah. didn't really want to say in church, but yeah. you know that'll <laughs> yeah. help protect that your was kids the cleaner from the man horse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you have uh, do you have any specific dad hacks or line items that uh, you like? There's a dad hack that's working right now. You know they kind of come in waves. They come and go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yep. a certain thing will work. Sometimes it won't work. But Preach. right now it's star that's charts. absolutely true. So we have it's star charts for okay. chores. Oh, so oh the, like little, like yeah. gold stars. Yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. So Avery, she'll get up in the morning. She wants to get all those stars filled out first thing in the morning. So she'll start awesome. one of those, like, <laughs> I'm like, you're making your bed for be for uh, for nighttime. Yeah, and she'll put her jammies back on so she can get that star. Because she wants that star. It's like 8 a.m. Like, you can't be getting a star because then she gets money from the star. Yeah, yeah. And what she gives to Elena because she doesn't really care about money. So she like collects a dollar. Here you go, Elena. She'll give it to her. Perfect. Um, funny. So Elena likes it. But yeah, so yeah star yeah. charts right now are going great. We're getting all kind of like brushing teeth going really well making the bed hey. cool making themselves breakfast i'm at that you guys are still have young kids but i'm at that yeah. nice age where the kids kind of take care of them they give themselves baths right. they sick uh, yeah that's awesome make their right? own cereal Jealous. for breakfast lunch and dinner <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> So yeah, so we kind of just manage the chaos now. We don't have to really do a lot. So of you it. just have them like hanging in the bathroom or something somewhere, or where yeah, do they have we'll their star charts? Uh, they're just on the fridge. Oh nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the fridge, so they can see them first thing in the morning when they got get a up. gold star. That's yeah. so cool. I love yeah. that. I mean, those those little like it's visual depictions. It's kind of like yeah. the stoplight thing you were talking about yeah. the other day. Like the visual depiction kind of mm -hmm. helps people mm -hmm. learn and helps kids yeah. see that. That's awesome. That's how we taught or got Liam to potty train. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing. We just did the stickers. Mm -hmm. Like you get a sticker every so often, and once you hit five how many it was get a treat and so he was pumped Sweet. for it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah my dad hack has nothing to do with children oh um, it has everything to do with using the equipment that your children brought into the house um for your own dad prowess um so we all like to drink coffee mm -hmm. um as we have noted several times on this show um speaking of which i need a refill yeah so uh but some of you dads may recognize what this piece of equipment is. Some of you might not. This is the insides of a Mr. Brown's bottle, um, which keeps the bottle from, like, allows gas or keeps gas. I don't actually know exactly how it works. But it's one of the parts that goes in one of Elsie's bottles. <laughs> um, but this also doubles perfectly as a funnel for a flask. <laughs> um, so, for, yeah, so for you dads out there that need to fill your flask for, you know, whatever bonfire you're being drugged to or, you know, um, or you just feel the need to fill your flask up, these Mr. Brown's bottle inserts um, work oh, perfectly mm -hmm. for that. And there they even go. have a little angle cut at the bottom so they won't seal in there when they go straight down and it dumps all the liquid out. So Somebody thought that one through. Yeah. I'm telling you. Well, I don't drink, but I'm going to go ahead and bother. <laughs> Thank just you. you know, just for just for just for later, just for later. But yeah, that was uh, I I saw that online somewhere, and I was like, yeah, definitely stealing that. That's hilarious huh. that that works because it does. It's you know the little hole in the top of the flask is always kind of a pain to get yeah. liquor yep. into, yep. and this thing is a perfect receptacle for that. Maybe clean it out before you give it back to your kids, um, <laughs> unless you're really trying to get them to sleep. I guess you know that's the the old wives' tale. Give them some whiskey to get them to sleep, yes. but. Um, Okay, so we <laughs> got through our dad tasks. So dad, dad hacks. Uh, Sorry, everybody. You're getting better, <laughs> yeah, and, better. Getting better every, and better. Every week. Better. Every week. Um, speaking of every week, we talk about, we have talked to a lot of guests about their experiences with the hospital, either leading up to it or while they're there during the delivery. And you and, and you and your family in particular with your experiences with, Avery having Down syndrome, I can imagine that you guys have quite a few stories that mm -hmm. go into that. Do you have any that you want to share with us, or maybe it's maybe it's delivery, maybe it's diagnosis, yeah. whatever it is? Do you have any stories? Yeah, I got some. I mean, from the um, 
the biggest thing, you know, you go to the, all the pre uh, workup stuff. You know, mm-hmm. the doctors ask you if you want to go. Like at that time, this was so she's born in 2011, so it'd been 2010, mm-hmm. and the only way they could test for uh, you know Down syndrome or any kind of abnormalities was a in vitro or like a they stick it in the ba- mama mm-hmm. through the belly and then pull some blood out of the baby, which is very invasive. <laughs> oh my we're gosh. like, ah, we're not gonna do that. We don't yeah. want any part mm-hmm. of that. Not that we would do anything about it, anyways. Sure. Um, looking back, and they've actually got a better test that just they test the mom's blood to see if there's okay. something like that. Um, always get that test. Sure. Not that you're going to do anything about it or if you are or whatever, but um, it's always nice to know because there's right. a lot of things Planning that happen purposes. whenever that they can't tell an ultrasound that you can tell when the baby comes out that they're going to need. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, just from yeah. a medical perspective, absolutely. So it was our first baby, so we're in the room, and I got a little joke here, but I'll... <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're in the room. That's and, what we're here for, buddy. Yeah, you, you bring those on. <laughs> Don't apologize. Uh, so we're in the room, and like there is like probably like it seems like 20 people in that room. And I don't know when, oh, yeah. like, Elsie was born or your kid. Like, yeah. there's only, like, when we had Atlanta, there's only, like, two people, the doctors and one nurse. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I think they knew something was up. They didn't want to tell us or freak us out or anything like that. Sure. So Amanda's got her, and this is the joke here, but Amanda's kind of like, she had, coming up to this, we'd done the class and all that stuff, and she's like, just no jokes during this certain No j- <laughs> Just no jokes. I'm like, Our wives okay. know us so well, don't they? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I won't do a joke, anything like that. So I didn't really think about any jokes or anything like that. Sure. So anyway... We're in the room. We're getting ready to start. Everybody starts coming in. The doctor's all ground up. She's got her legs in the stirrup all spread out. I'm mm-hmm. holding her leg, you know, and I got her hand. And the doctor's like, you ready to go? And I go, man, that kind of reminds you of college, doesn't it? <laughs> She's got, so she looks at me and, like, laser beams come right at me. <laughs> and she kind of giggled, and it kind of broke the tense. And the doctor, he, he, he thought it was pretty good. <laughs> oh, that's um, great. Kind of broke the tension and got yeah, things yeah, going. Yeah, right. Um, but then, okay, so then we had Avery. Uh, it was really easy delivery. Everything came out. Good. They give Avery to uh, Amanda. Amanda's like, I think she has Down syndrome. I yeah. said, I think so too. And the doctor's like, Oh no, she just bloated. I'm like, just oh, I mean, that makes okay. sense. I mean, yeah. I don't know. This is my yeah. first baby. Yeah, yeah. Expert, I, I haven't done right? this before, yeah. and you have. So uh, yeah. whatever you say. Exactly. Though. So they get her all cleaned up and everything like that. And Amanda like nurses her for a minute, and then a couple of people hold her, and then they like whisk her off real fast. Mm. And I'm like, well, that seems strange. I thought we got to keep the babe. They're like, oh, we'll sure, bring the right. baby. We're just gonna clean her up and bring her to you and everything like that. So we wheel Amanda to the uh, the after room, her room she's gonna be in for two or three days. Yep. So she calls like, when are you gonna bring my baby to me? Well, we gotta come talk to you about it real fast. Oh no. So yeah. then she, we're freaking out. Yeah. Like, that's that's yeah. the call you don't want to get. Yeah. yeah. If we ever, and we're not gonna have any more babies, but mm-hmm. if something were to happen, like we're not telling anybody we had a baby until we get, like we'll say we're pregnant, but like we're gonna be home before we say. Hey, we're home. There's yeah. a child here. The baby was born six <laughs> days ago. If you wanna come see her, she's at home now. Or right. you know, probably her because I'm a girl dad. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um. But yeah, so then finally they came down and I went and saw Avery and she was like in a deal, but I guess she turned blue. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, when they, that's why they took her out real fast. Oh my God. Um, turned blue, but apparently babies are born with about two weeks worth of extra milk or liquids inside there. So as they're learning to eat, mm-hmm. that way they can burn off those excess I did um, not know that. calories. Interesting. So that's why, they're, as they're, that's why you get to take the baby home because they got excess built up while they learn. Sure. Well, she burned through that because she had a heart condition when it ended up happening. She had a hole in her heart. Oh gosh. Oh, gosh. Um, so. We I wheel Amanda down to the, like the little NICU room and they're great there. I love. Oh NICU. yeah, this was the old NICU. I don't know if you the new NICU is nice and big. This one was like a closet compared to what they have now. I the, the NICU nurses are mm-hmm. the the single greatest people in that hospital. Exactly. I'm a firm believer. Was most mm-hmm. of the, most of them most of them are women, but those women are saints. Yeah. They are. So we wheel Amanda in. The doctor pulls into like this little side room and he's like, I gotta talk to you. Here. He's kind of got a heart condition right now. I think we're we're gonna do some more x-rays, but I think it's fine. She hasn't turned blue in a while. I'm like, well, that's great. Yeah, that's well, good to know. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah, Thank you exactly. for that yeah. mental yeah. picture, Doc. Nonchalantly wow. pregnant. Yeah. Exactly. Jesus. Yeah. He was, I mean, he's a great doctor. He's sure. retired since then, but he was very blunt and to the point. Uh, so uh, it took both of us was. to go to every appointment to understand what he was saying mm-hmm. because we're like, okay, I picked up, he said this and you, he said this and we had to put the uh, puzzle together when we got home sure. that's about what frightening. he talked about yeah um but no like so basically we were in the NICU for two weeks while she learned to eat is essentially what we were doing wow. so yeah. we'd gotcha. feed her as much as possible give her the medicine or the bottle when she would get done eating mm-hmm. that or worn out we would have to put a little tube down her throat and fill her belly up that yeah. way 
And it just got better and better every time. We were actually sleeping in like these little like chairs like this with like mm-hmm. armrests. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've yeah. talked about the shitty the, the hospital diners. chairs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's they suck. Yeah, they're they quite finally, bad. I think they finally felt bad enough for us. They gave us like a room off to the side because we were. I mean, we were there. Some one of us was there for the whole two weeks. Yeah. Like I'd go home, sure. take a shower, come back. She'd go home, take a shower, and come back and right. forth. Yeah. Uh, but no, they're great. And then she actually did have heart surgery at a year and a half. Avery mm, did. Dang. Um, she had just started learning to walk and. Um, there's another funny story there, but so we went to Cardinal Glennon for the surgery and she's a year and a half old. So, um, what was I going with that story? I don't know. Anyway. Oh yeah. Here we go. Um, so we're, so she had the surgery. She had all the tubes, everything. She said she was sore. She, you know, could tell she wasn't feeling good. So they finally wheel her out to like the little NICU area. It's not NICU, whatever they call it up there. Sure. Anyway, they wheel her out. So we went to the hotel and came back the next day, and she's still kind of sleeping. So we stuck out all day there. Then went to the hotel the next day, came back. She's gone. No idea where she's at. Like, what the heck happened? Like, they just didn't say her. anything. No, we Ugh. were like, where is she at? Jeez. Like, what's going on? And then we see like these doctors doing rounds. I'm like, so we walk over. Like, where's our baby at? And she's just they're carrying her. Uh, she's just having a great time. She feels great. Like two days after our open heart surgery. Holy oh crap! She's feeling fantastic. What a rock so star! Her what around. a rock star! I know. Man. So. And we were home like by four days after her surgery. Really, it was and, crazy. Yeah, and she's Dang. just the sweetest kid too. Mm-hmm. So that's wow. That 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 open heart surgery to you know being up and moving and um, being fine mm-hmm. to be up and moving just in a couple mm-hmm. of days. That's madness. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. They say the younger you are, the faster you bounce sure. back. From which like which that. makes complete sure. sense. Sure. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that that part about mm-hmm. about Avery when she was first born. Yeah, I didn't that's, know the open heart thing at all. That's crazy, yeah. but. But yeah, she. I mean, I've I've met Avery probably five times or so. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's just so awesome. She's like the kindest, mm-hmm. sweetest mm-hmm. little kid. Oh yeah. Like, well, last she night, gave us suckers last yeah. night, man. Yeah, like handed night, us suckers. Last poker night rights. we had poker. God, as soon as we are? get there, she gives us all suckers, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then before she goes to bed, she has to go around and give us all hugs and mm-hmm. saying goodnight. And I'm like, you're like the sweetest little kid ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I felt great. bad. I, I snuck back in there and put the candy back in her room. It's like yeah. I don't want right? to steal the, this little girl's candy. I can't do this. I'm not taking her sucker. I'm just not gonna. Do it, Dad hack. That's three year old uh, Halloween candy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep giving it back. <laughs> Just send it right back. <laughs> the good stuff, me and Amanda hide. Yeah, well, as you Fair. well should. Fair. I mean, it's it's the dad tax, man. Yeah. That stuff's real. Well, we exactly. uh, we we spent several days, and I've talked about this before on the podcast, but we spent several days in the NICU with Elsie because she had a blood sugar issue, and I cannot sing the praises of the NICU nurses loud enough mm-hmm. i mean i still use stuff now now obviously most of it doesn't apply because I'm, it's not a little tiny baby anymore but like <laughs> they taught me how to feed my daughter mm-hmm. like and the right way to feed my daughter and the right way to rest and and how to lay her so that it's comfortable for both of us meaning that we were going to be laying here for a long time and so it might be a while mm-hmm. i learned how to feed my kid in that room those mm-hmm. women are godsends for mm-hmm. sure yeah. so like i now the room that they sent us to after the fact, I I then so immediately five changed. Star hotel? Yeah, I immediately yeah. changed my turn uh, tone there. <laughs> we had to stay in the care by parent room, uh-huh. and Liv had just had a C section, and they made Liv sleep on the same couch that the dads are expected mm-hmm. to. Um, and I yelled at. Well, I didn't yell, but I got very mm-hmm. close to yelling at some people. Yeah. Like, no, you need to find something else for my wife. This is not going to work. Wheel one of those fancy beds you have. Yeah, exactly. Just around. Get one of those freaking beds down. It doesn't even have to be the nicest one. Just get Couple something thousand of down them here, around here now. Exactly. All right, Eric. Well, like we said, we know you pretty well. We know you're a big, uh, big video game guy. Oh, yeah. Big, uh, big tech guy. So I'm sure... You've uh, you've hooked uh, Avery and Elena up with uh, with some good good tech, or got them hooked on video games, or something like that. Um, which I guess they're probably old enough to start using some of that sure. stuff, oh, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that makes that's that's prime time. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to get you know when my boys hit an age that I can kind of start doing that stuff with them. So yeah, you know what what have you been able to do with 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 the girls so far? So the greatest thing about tech is as the kids get older, the presence gets smaller. <laughs> Brian has a TP in his living room. Right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got no TPs in my house. I've got small little electronics that's that hang so around. That's true, though. That's hilarious. So, the giant boxes are no more, huh? Exactly. And I'm not spending hours putting stuff together at night. Like, it's like here's the box. I'm Charge jealous. it. There you go. Ready to go. Yeah, little kids um, have the biggest stuff. Oh, yeah. So, like, that makes total sense. They do. Um, so Avery's got, they both have tablets. That's what we start at. Mm-hmm. So Avery's still on her tablet. She's probably like 
six to seven years old mentally. She's mm-hmm. 11, but six to seven. So she just plays with her tablet mainly. Cool. mainly. Uh, we got to set for an hour, so she'll come out. Okay, so you do have the limiter yeah. on oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll be on the couch watching TV, and all of a sudden we'll hear this, because ah! <laughs> it died in the middle of whatever she was watching. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> she'll come out. Dad would die. <laughs> it's like, okay, so we'll give her more time and let her do it. Sure. But she just watches, like, YouTube basically all mm-hmm. the time. She's watching, uh, like, she watches Mario videos now. Nice. Because Elena plays Mario. Sweet. A um, lot of, like, coloring. Kimmy the Clown, if you're familiar with Kimmy the Clown. Huh. Nope, but we uh, need I to add that one to the list. No, we got it. No, no, ignore it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> it's not good. It's yeah, not good exactly. for you. Don't do it. So, Worse than Coco Melon, exactly. Yeah. Lots of and blippy. singing. <laughs> Which that's helped her vocabulary actually. Cause Has it she, really? she watches people. She watches um, karaoke videos of songs she likes, so like in Canto. Oh, so like like yeah. a song. Cool. So she'll have the the words come across the screens, and she's kind of following along. So that's How great is that? benefit. That's nothing we planned, but she's really like her vocabulary's picked up really immensely since the last couple of years. So she started doing that. That's awesome. Yeah. What a great idea. I know. Um, worked out well for us. Any like cool presents? You talked about the presents getting smaller. Yeah. Have they gotten any specific presents that you've, you've liked with them? Yeah. So uh, last year, Elena, so she's kind of done with the tablet. She still watches a little bit and plays a little bit of games in there, but we got her a Switch last year. Cool. So she loves that Switch. Uh, she plays it all the time. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny. She'll, um, like, we'll play Mario Kart or Mario Party or some kind of those little fun games. Mm-hmm. Mommy, can you come play with me? No, I'm making the supper. How's right. your dad? No. Not asking dad. I'm like, well, I'm right here. I'm not yeah, doing anything. I'm a video game guy here. I'm play with you. <laughs> no, you always beat me. <laughs> well, if you're going to beat here. me, you're going to earn it. Yeah, right? listen, <laughs> I mean, I'm not raising a loser, that's okay? Right. <laughs> no mercy in here, okay? <laughs> but, like, this is a year ago. She, it's getting tough to beat her now. I can still what? do it, but it's it's pretty tough. She's got a lot gotta better. That's got to be so much fun. That's got to be so much fun. It is, much fun. It is a lot of fun. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's Yeah. Th- well, Liv and I, that was one of the things early in our relationship – I think it was one of the first times I went to Macon with her. Her dad's a big, like, original Nintendo guy. And so he oh, has all of his, like, OG, old, huh? exactly. He yeah. has, like, the original Nintendo set up or, like, the SNES a, set up. And so, but in one of their rooms, like, in the little back room, they had a N64 set up. And it was later in the evening. There's not a whole bunch to do in that little small town. And we were just hanging out at her parents' house. And Liv, and I, Liv looks at me and goes, do you want to go play Mario Kart? I was like... Hell yeah, dude. Yes, I do. <laughs> you don't know what, you, what you're doing to yourself. And we played three rounds, and I unfortunately beat her handily all three rounds. She, three set, she set the controller down and walked out of the room without saying a word and just didn't talk yeah. to me for like an hour. You asked, like, for you asked me to yeah. play this. Yeah. We're having fun. I was having fun. Yeah. I can't help that you weren't having fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I know you, you shared a, a video with us mm-hmm. earlier, Eric. Uh, oh, about, yeah. About one of the <laughs> yeah. – and hopefully we'll, we'll put it on, on the, the, the episode here. But uh, one of the, the gifts that uh, that you got the mm-hmm. girls was uh, was a hoverboard. Yeah. So, so that's how, what – How's that working She out? wanted a hoverboard this year. <sighs> Elena wanted a hoverboard. So I did my research. I'm looking at hoverboards. And I've, I'm at the point in my life where I'm tired of buying the cheap thing. Sure. Right. Yeah. Because it lasts like six months. You pay you for buy it. Something yeah. New. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm reading all those reviews. Like the top one, I'm like, I'm going to buy this one. It's like $400. It carries 400 pounds. It goes this fast. Dang. So I started thinking about it. I'm like, I can almost pounds. get on there. Well, that's the thing. 400 pounds. I'm like, I'll be tempted to try this right. thing. Sure. I could do it. So the next one down was weight limit 170. I'm like, I will never be there. So I bought the 170 pounder. That a boy. Because I <laughs> don't even tempt yourself. <laughs> so, I will break exactly. every bone in my body. <laughs> so Amanda gets on it. She's doing one of these numbers, but she got really good at it too. But awesome. I, I'm not even going to try. I don't want to uh, break it. So. I don't blame you. So yeah. So Lena, she's we got. Uh, I mean, she's riding in the house right yeah. now. We haven't. It's been cold outside, so she didn't really get to ride outside. Sure. I did take her to the blood center one day and let her ride around until it died. Perfect. It's a big open gym area. Yeah, yeah. Every time. Um, but she's been riding around the house, so like all my doors have like scuffs down both all the doors, <laughs> all the upstairs, all the baseboards have tire marks all down it. <laughs> yep. She'll be on the couch watching TV. She gets on her hoverboard, goes to the bathroom, jumps off of it, and I mean, I'm not talking. It's like from here to like the wall over there. It's like. <laughs> She gets on it, goes to the bathroom. 15 feet. Right? Using that hoverboard. Yeah. <laughs> Use the restroom, get back on it, come back out to the couch, you know, or she'll go right to the kitchen, get a drink, and then come back out. Um, I gave her my old phone, so now she can connect Bluetooth to it. So now she, every time she gets up, she has to put her music on for like the 10 second ride to the bathroom. Does so it she, play through the hoverboard? Yeah, it yeah, does. Speakers Sick. on the hoverboard. Wow, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Dang. So cool. Yeah. yeah. I want cool. one now. I'll send Shoot. the link right here. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Well, and the video, and Erica said that we can play the video because it's. 
I, I assume that this is relatively early in her having this, and so she's still learning how to do it. But <laughs> um, I won't spoil the video for you guys, but uh, it's very reminiscent of what would happen if I were to get on it as well. <laughs> um (laughs) that's really good um the did you so you you talked about the hour-long uh limiter on Mm -hmm. on the ipads has that been a thing for y'all for a long time because we one of the things that we always talk about and it's kind of a funny little comment for all of us is that we were very diligent about well our kid's not going to watch any tv Mm -hmm. not my kids they won't they won't need that we won't need that (laughs) and then (laughs) we just got done another episode with peyton wilcox and he was like when i'm hung over screen time rules go out the door oh, yeah. <laughs> the, you just get as much time as you want um but yeah like the second you actually have kids and realize that holy crap tv is very helpful if you need to like go take a dump or <laughs> something <laughs> something like exactly. that like you can hear them in right. the other room if they can sit there and watch the tv and i can go take a league for a couple yeah. of seconds like good grief mm-hmm. did you guys do a lot of that stuff right out of the gate with like screen time oh, limiting yeah. and all that and we're gonna like watch what they watch we're gonna make sure they're not watching anything like embarrassing or something they shouldn't be getting into sure, sure. Yeah. now like, i walk in elena's room she like hides her tablet and i'm like I don't care. Just go for it. <laughs> You're gonna see it eventually. So, <laughs> well, that's so. Is it? Have you guys gone down like the rabbit hole of like the parental control yeah. stuff? Like, uh, like because YouTube, I know you can dial in. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think you can dial in what the they're watching or like. And yeah. I think there's like a YouTube kids side. Mm-hmm. So I almost apologize to the microphone. I just touched. <laughs> um, isn't there like a? Can you do some of the tweaking and gomming on that side of things? Yeah, have yeah, you done we, with that? Yeah, they both have YouTube kids on their phone, mm. on their tablets. That's all they have. So they don't oh, actually okay. have the full YouTube. Mm-hmm. Nice. So I figure, like, that's good. You know, YouTube, they can take care uh, of things. Like, so they, they can, can't watch Decent Dads then. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> seems like a great <laughs> loss to them. There. But that is <laughs> the, the YouTube. All. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> The YouTube kids thing is good, if only because that's what we do with else. Not that she's to the point where she can control. I mean, she uses the clicker, but it's not on purpose she just um, wants to push buttons um, and then god only knows what she's actually going to get to when she does click through it uh, um, yeah. it's scary how how much they pick up on because like, liam's already Li- liam like, liam already knows blown. you know you scroll your phone like he can punch in the code on my phone go to my photos click videos on my photos that he likes to watch himself or watch brody he'll find the he'll scroll down there find the video play it and just mm-hmm. laughs at it and i'm like good he's not even three years old yet and i'm like Lord. how in the heck do you know how to do this? My my parents don't even know how to do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sixty years old. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's one of those things where it's like you see yourselves becoming your parents. Yeah, I'm probably <laughs> oh, like yes. I'm probably maybe ten years from being the luddite that are that is my dad. Like yeah. I'm just convinced that I will not. Elsie will be you know manipulating phones and or whatever you know neural link that she has in in ten years, and she won't have a phone anymore. It'll just be in her head or whatever yeah. it is. But like. I'm f- sure I'll just be a Luddite mm-hmm. for that whole thing. Uh, well, hopefully my parents will start calling Liam and Brody when they have tech mm-hmm. issues instead of me. That'll be, that'll be the one nice thing about it. Did you, you know? try turning it off and then back right. on again? Yeah, five-year-old Liam's going to be on the phone with him. All right, here's what you do. <laughs> Press the red button until it shuts off. You know. I have uh, no expectation of being good at technology my entire life. But sure. I told myself, because we got my grandparents a CD player you know, years ago, and they blew their mind. They didn't know what to do with this thing. I'm like, I'm at least going to try. It's like a smaller record. Like, my girls bring me, like, this is a new technology I think you'll like. I'm going to give it 100%. Like, mm-hmm. if you tell me what to do, and I'll, like, I'll write it down, make notes, things like that. I'm sure. going to go out there and try to find the new tech, but I'll I'll definitely take notes. and Right, yeah. Or, or you know, or you go down the rabbit hole that is TikTok, and uh, then you look up two hours later, and you're still mm-hmm. scrolling through 15-second videos. Um, speaking of Luddite, um, I'm a Boy Scout. I'm an Eagle Scout. I know you're a big camper. Mm-hmm. Um, you and a couple of other of our buddies have, have I mean, you guys camp like 10 plus s- times. Uh, several yeah. times yeah. a year, right? Yeah, we try to go. We I think we went 11 last year. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So do you have any good camping stories with the kids? Because yeah. that's that you will be our first camping dad <laughs> as well, because we've not had a lot of folks that have really that's been willing to share a story. And that's <laughs> true. There you go. That's a good point. Yeah. No, we love. I've loved camping since I was in college. You know, mm-hmm. we'd go you know, float trips with buddies, and yep. like, so I met Amanda my senior year of college. So I'm like, hey, we're going to float trip. I think we went to like six float trips that year. Sweet, like six different weekends throughout the summertime. I think she's kind of tired by the end, <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> she stuck with you though. Didn't I know she? that's right. She did. Um, so we went to the first float trip, and she's like, we're going to sleep at. I said, in the car. That's where you sleep. I just pulled the seat down and sleep in the car. I don't bring anything like that. 
Well, How'd for, that go over? Yeah, not so well. <laughs> she did it the first time. But then, uh, so the second time we got, I'm like, okay, I'll buy you a tent. So we bought like a little pop-up tent, real small. Sure. Well, you know, this is better, but I can't really stand up in here and change clothes. It's really hard to change clothes. All right. <laughs> So I bought her the big tent, you know, sure. with the, the one room for the queen size bed, another mm-hmm. room to like get up and, you know. Oh dang! I had, yeah. I had one of those. Tent, yeah. I had one of those. Absolutely. Still have it. So, yeah. Um, still have it. That still wasn't the key. She went a few more times with that, but that still wasn't the key. And and I, I say her. I'm also I like the things she likes too. So sure, I, but bougie, you're gonna blame it on her. Camper. Yeah, you're a bougie yeah, exactly. boy. That's exactly what you are. <laughs> yeah, glamping. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. So, so we're getting to exactly. yeah. Clampy. <laughs> there you go. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna try. We're gonna keep trying this. So I went and bought a pop up. Yeah. I'm like, this is nice. It's got AC, you know, and the whole like the True. beds fly out. There's a queen bed. And all right, this is better, but it's still not quite there. I'm like, okay, here's my last chance. So I went and bought this 1982 just old junk camper. Like this thing was falling apart. No hot water heater in it. It's like we had to put the table down to sleep at night. Yep. Yeah. But it did have one thing. The other ones didn't. A bathroom. Mm-hmm. And that was the key right there. Ah. So I spent like four grand on this like old camper. Sure. Before I went and spent thirty grand on a brand new one. Oh, boy. And uh, yeah, that was the key. So the girls all excited. We get the truck. We had to borrow a truck. Cause we have a truck at the time. Just had the camper, no truck. <laughs> borrow a truck. We tow down there. The girls are excited. They're camping for the first time. How old were the little ones when you went first time? I mean, this is probably like six years ago. So wow. Like four. That's and awesome. Little. Four and yeah. seven. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like that. You better get ready. It's about your time. Oh, I'm yeah, so there excited. you go. You can go. We got a whole group that goes you still, camping. You still got that 1980 camper? No, we did sell Dang that. One. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that one's at. <laughs> I got a Jeep. We'll yeah. put Elsie in the back. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first time the girls were super excited. We're excited. The girls slept zero that entire night. They did Uncomfortable not or just too excited? No, just too excited. They awesome. were up and down. So me and Amanda are trying to sleep. They're just bouncing around this whole camper. I'm sure the neighborhoods are all like, what's going on in this camper? Why is it so loud at night? <laughs> Camper's rocking. It's yeah. probably the kids different, up different and down reason. Bed, yeah, you know? different. not what you think. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that first night, then we all slept the next day. Yeah, I'm sure. sleeping outside. Man is on one of the beds. The girls are just passed out. <laughs> um, but then we got through it. Now it's yeah, second nature. Like it's eight o'clock time to go, or whatever time it is. Ten sure. o'clock. Eight o'clock is normal bedtime. Ten o'clock we go camping. Ten sure. o'clock time to go to bed, and they just crawl up in their little bunks now. And, yeah. and we got not one with a nice bathroom and a shower and all that stuff. Cool. Now, so we're really good. And and we go with like I think Dave Schomburg was on your podcast. Mm-hmm. He goes quite a bit. Uh, Tim Potoff, another friend of ours, yeah. he goes quite a bit. We actually we're going to Florida this year, taking it down to a place in cool on um, Pensacola Beach. So it backs yeah. up to the peninsula side, and it's just a short walk to the ocean. And we got four That'd friends cool. going down to that one, awesome. so we're really excited for that. They were going to rent a boat and go deep sea fishing one day. So, dang. dang. Can we come? Yeah, yeah. I, want, yeah. I want to go to there. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go to there. I made a commitment when we bought this camp. We're going to do one long trip every year with it. That's cool. And, and I mm-hmm. think if you're going to spend the money on something right. like mm-hmm. that, like that was the way my parents were. We had a, a place at the lake. And we didn't do vacation vacations Mm -hmm. because we had the lake place. And that was like our our move is we would go down there. And that was as often as humanly possible, whether it was in lake season or out of lake season. That was our way of making sure that we were getting our money's worth Mm -hmm. out of this stinking thing is that we were going to go use it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we spent a week down there um, between Christmas and New Year's most of the time Mm -hmm. just because it was somewhere to go other than sitting at the house and twiddling our thumbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys do camping or any of that as as kids? Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, I grew up like in the. Out in the I guess sticks, living right? in and uh, living so in Humansville is kind of camping. Funny so how like uh, how it progresses? Because right when you're a little kid, you you pitch the tent in the bedroom. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um. And then that moves into the backyard, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and then yeah, once I hit a certain age, I didn't really do it for a while till like you're saying uh, college, mm-hmm. and that was our thing too. In college was drinking well, outdoors. Well, going <laughs> going, going floating like uh-huh. we would. Go down early, float, set up camp, float the next day, and mm-hmm. then uh, then leave. And so, and that was like that was a blast. And, and my boys, they already love going like mm-hmm. down to my parents and like exploring and stuff. So I know once they get a little bit bigger, That'd be fun. they're going to love camping. Mm-hmm. But I can't get this uh, 1980s camper out of my head. <laughs> Tell like, me, I, I'm thinking of, like, are you pulling up like Uncle Ed, Uncle Eddie style, <laughs> like <laughs> off a of Christmas vacation with this it really this camper? <laughs> I mean, I'm into it. That's but it. I like that. Like, I, I almost want to do that. Just go buy like this old junky camper mm-hmm. and do it the first couple times, and then it's like if, if mm-hmm. we upgrade. They'll really appreciate that new well, one. Yeah, and you're right? not, and, and to Eric's <laughs> point, you're not dropping thirty grand on, to make sure like, you the like newest it. Newest of yeah. the new to make right? sure you like it. Yeah. yeah, but that's yeah. I mean, so I like I mentioned earlier, I I did the whole Boy Scout Eagle Scout thing, um, and so that was a huge part of my childhood and and young adulthood. But 
my wife is not a camper. Oh, yeah, mine neither. And so I think Liv would need what you're talking about, though. Mm-hmm. It's it's the bathroom. Mm-hmm. There's got to be a bathroom that isn't like What's wrong with in cam- the middle campground of- bathroom? Oh, God. I don't, I don't see the problem there. Yeah, well... <laughs> yeah, no, that is not the answer. that is not the answer. Because um, like when I when I was a kid, we went on a high adventure trip to Colorado, and we we climbed uh, Long's Peak, and my mom went with me, and an uncle went with me. Um, but I was 13 years old, and I did a 14er at 13. Um, one of my great life achievements. It was really really cool. But mom did not do that trip, that part of the trip with us. She went with another group of of parents, um, and did. A, a, another trip that there's a lake up there that's about halfway up there, but she had to stay overnight and you know, going to the bathroom more than once a day, mm-hmm. you're going to have to go to the bathroom on an overnight trip. And if you're in the middle of the woods, so she comes back and you could see like she had a story for me and her <laughs> face was still white. Where they camped was in the middle of the woods. I mean, sure. this is yeah. this is backpack it all in, set up mm-hmm. your stuff, backpack it all out kind of camping. The restroom there, um, she was told that there was a bathroom there, and that was one of the only reasons she committed to doing it. Was it a hole in the ground? I swear to God, Derek, <laughs> it was a stump that had been cut off, and somebody had screwed a toilet seat onto it. Well, at least so, I had a toilet seat. <laughs> so there was a, you know, there was a toilet she screen. doesn't have to worry about splinters. Exactly. So. <laughs> there was a toilet seat screwed onto a stump. <laughs> And then they had had a, like a kind of a pit thing dug out under it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so wow. So my my mother, who is you know, is is not you know super prissy or anything, or like that was going to be a big big thing for her. But like again, the restroom is very important for the women in our lives, oh, yeah. um, and that was that was a no go for mom. And so when I live and I have been talking about trying to do revamp a camping trip that my parents did as kids or as when, when I was a kid where it was a group of families and it was like mm-hmm. 15 families went and lined up in a camp a camp ground in Arkansas and it was like a competition of who could which parent could have like the coolest camp set up yep. like they had pop-up tents and uh-huh. stoves and the double room oh, yeah. tent like you were talking mm-hmm. about and all the latest gadgets exactly all yep. the gadgetry and all the yep. crap that went along with that and all the dads were just like who can make the biggest beefiest like right. red meat thing yeah. or whatever <laughs> yep. um, but we had been talking about trying to revamp that and Liv was like okay I'll do it as long as there is a restroom that I can use that has a door that closes and is not directly next to everybody else in the campground. <laughs> yeah, okay, we can probably make that work for you. Uh, yeah, I can't wait uh, to take Allie on our first camping trip. Yeah. Because I, mean, I think she went a few times when she was younger, but you, you know my wife pretty well. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know, Eric, if you know Allie very well, but she's very much a girly girl. She's so, rugged, man. She's real rugged. So, yeah, those uh, those <laughs> campground bathrooms, it's, yeah. uh, it's going to be tough for her to adjust to, you know. But, well, just uh, bring the wipes, clean off the seats. She'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> put a go bring a toilet seat with you and yeah. put it on stump. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Isn't> that hilarious. <laughs> five, <laughs> gallon yeah, five gallon bucket of toilet seat <laughs> and a paper bra- or a trash bag. It's fine. That's all you need. Oh man. Well, yeah. I mean, we we've hit a lot of stuff here, uh, you know, today, Eric. But I mean, is there any any other stories that you know you're wanting to mm-hmm. to share with everybody, or you're wanting to bring up anything? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a couple things I thought about. I don't know if you've anybody that has. Deals, deals with race car driving at all mm. on your podcast. Uh, How did we not even think about yeah, that? Yeah, he's a race car driver. Yeah. Um, so, did you even know that? I, I did know okay. that, but I was trying to think. It, didn't you race like go karts too? Yeah. Okay. So, as, as a kid. So my dad, he's a. He grew he, out of them very early. I can't tell. Yeah. yeah can't tell. <laughs> so my dad, I was eight years old, and he took me to the local go kart track one time, and he's like, "You like this?" I'm like, "Yes, yeah, kind of fun." He's like, "We should buy one." Okay. So like the next day, he comes home with a go kart. <laughs> Ready to go. Commitment. I like it. Yeah. So I'm like, well, that looks cool. He he tells the story now. He's like, man, I would have been so excited. You were like, yeah, that's cool. But then, (laughs) you know, we did that from 8 to 15, Mm -hmm. racing go-karts. It's funny, like... I think I won my first race because we finally realized you could change gears on it to make it a little faster. We didn't know you could oh. do that. Like when I say we, because like I am not a good race car driver. Like I got good by practicing. Mm-hmm. But my dad is amazing at setting up race cars and go karts. So we, because he always made the cars work for me. Sweet. Oh. There when we quit racing go karts at fifteen, he would go. We'd get to the track. He'd go look at it. Go work on the car for like ten minutes. 
and we'd be out there and just be able to you know dominate cool. in the go karts. So he was that good. We would go to the national competitions with you know two hundred cars in a class, and we'd always make Holy the feature crap. of like twenty cars. Dang. I think the best I finished was like seventh or eighth one time on a national competition in go karts. Wow. That's yeah. Crazy. So. Uh, cool, that, but again, that's something you get to do with your dad. And I know. Like, that's kind of a bonding thing, and you yeah. guys still do that to this day, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. We um, And like Mom always says, you know, when I was a kid, we were together every single weekend mm-hmm. doing some – like we were at the racetrack Which every single awesome. weekend. Yeah. I wasn't that's out so cool. like partying, things like that, because it was the race car. And then even racing is a lot of work just looting up to it uh-huh. to get it all ready. So then got a race car at 15. I was 6'4 at the time, so weight's real important in go-karts, and we just couldn't get the weight right. Like, I was just too heavy. I was skin yeah. bones, but still. But still 7'4". Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then got the race car at 15. Had to lie about how old I was to get to my first race. Um, they asked for a driver's license. They're like, oh, we left it at home. Okay, he's tall. All right. So, all right. Okay, yeah, he's, he's tall. Yeah. So I think the race car was the first car I ever uh, drove. Period. Oh, First ever car I ever drove. What? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So did that from 15. Avery's 11. So I'm 40. So 30. Tells 30. We did that like full time, like three nights a week, every single weekend. So cool. Uh, in the summertime, travel to big races, things like that. Where was the furthest you went? Uh, Knoxville, Iowa. Sweet. Okay. There's a big half mile Knoxville. track up there. You may have, anybody that's ever, there's a big fancy track up there. And, um, we probably shouldn't have gone. We probably weren't prepared, but we won the heat. Uh, we won our heat race, which Sweet. put us in the feature. Are these dirt tracks or yeah, asphalt? dirt tracks? Yeah. And we had a dirt modified, and uh, so they have a row of all these like nice big camp or like trailers. You know, the mm-hmm. big like have two cars in them. We're on here like our little open trailer with our <laughs> truck that's towing it. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> and we get down to the feature time. We're the only car. That is not one of those big trailers <laughs> that's still racing. Everybody yeah. else is already loaded up. We're the only one that made it. I made about five laps and I destroyed the wall. Mm. The I wall. could see the bump on my forehead. It stuck out so far. Went to the Ooh. hospital that night just to check her concussion. Oh, dude. And dad, we got out of the hospital. I was like two or three in the morning. He's like, We're driving home. So we drove home. I think I was driving the trailer at one point. I fell asleep and ended up in a ditch and kind of came back out of it. And dad's like, I'm driving the rest of the way. Wake up, dad. <laughs> I can't believe he put you behind the wheel. That's awesome. Well, I was like, I was that's like hilarious. 18, no, I know. He did have his driver's yeah. license at that point. No, but yeah. I meant more along the lines of he had just crashed oh, his yeah. face into, a, <laughs> into the was, steering wheel just yeah. recently. At 3 a.m., your decisions become a little rough. Yeah, yeah. go figure. Um, so, yeah, so then I still do a little. My dad still races all the time. I kind of got out of it when I had the kids. It's because sure. there's too much going on. But my dad still races all summer long on the weekends. Him and mom is their date night. Yeah. And they love it. And I go a couple times a year, take their car out. And he lets me drive it whenever I want to. So I'll mm-hmm. take it out a couple times. We do a big race down in Texas and have a lot of How fun cool. on that one. Um, but um, back to the uh, dads, mm-hmm. Elena's got a go kart now. Cool. Oh, so she just turned eight. Cool. So I think here in a couple of weeks we're going to take her out for her first race. There's a practice night the day before. I'm going to see how she does. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that she's super into it. She what? is. She. I think. Well, I think she will be when she gets on the track. She enjoys driving around the circle at the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't like the helmet, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah. She has to wear the helmet. Where but. does one go to go kart race around here besides Branson? Uh, there's a few tracks. There's one in Ashgrove, one in Butterfield, which is out by Monette, yeah. and they're <laughs> they're turning a horse barn here in a couple of weeks into a horse arena into a go-kart track oh really um so me and dad went and watched dad's like why are you don't be a sissy just bring the cart out and we'll race it. and i'm like now i want to watch one time and see what this is like before i sign elena up for this you know <laughs> oh, yeah right it's so, different this is my little girl this is my little girl we're not just jumping the gun <laughs> so, here pop yeah it's not happening amanda was a little harder sell but i think she's on board sure. with it she knows how close my family is because of racing so yeah. i think she's on board to give it a shot and if Elena doesn't want to do it we'll stop i'm, I'm not going to force her to do anything she doesn't want to do but sure. yeah. so i think that's the next generation and i'll put so every cool. dollar into it if she yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, what a cool thing to get to do. Again, we talk about this a lot, but it's like finding something that you as a parent got to do as a kid or something you were into and you're excited to share with your children. And this is exactly that conversation. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. The other key, t- key takeaway there is, uh, yeah, find something uh, to keep them busy on the weekends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they don't yeah, keep trouble. them out of That's partying. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Like, I don't yeah, need that so thought process. Like, what can we do? Sounds like go-kart racing. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like travel basketball <laughs> for your yeah. kids. I would get home from the races on Saturday night. I'd get to my house and I had three or four roommates and like there'd be just cans of beer where people partying. I'm like, I'm going to bed, guys. Yeah. I'm tired. I just yeah. raced. I got home at 1 a.m. I'm ready for bed. They'd all be clearing out when I got home. So <laughs> Perfect. I missed, I missed party, all the bad stuff. Had fun, so. What about any other stories? Do you have anything else that you think we should talk yeah. about? Well, that's a pretty good one about Avery I've got. Okay, that nice. I'll, I'll kind of share here. Um, so Avery is in a special need. Well, she goes to her classroom, her 
fifth grade classroom for maybe you know like two or three hours a day, mm-hmm. not okay. necessarily just like an hour or two. Anyway, she's in a special needs classroom most of the day mm-hmm. with her other special needs friends, which she loves. Her teacher is amazing. Good. Um, so every day she sends home a piece of paper, basically saying Avery had this for breakfast, this for lunch. She needed snacks. You know how her day went, what she kind of learned on. But it's always like three check marks: smiley face, neutral face, and like sad face. How her oh, day went. Okay. Positive. So she'd always bring him home, and she wouldn't pull him out of the bag, never paid much attention to him. So we're like, how'd your day go? And so we'd pull the paper out, like, oh, you had a bad day. What happened? Oh, sorry, or something like that, she would say. Aww. You know, just cute, but it's like, yeah, you know. she's a sweetheart, man. So we said, okay, if you're going to have a bad day, you're going to get your tablet tonight. Okay. So she, we took her tablet like four or five times. Well, the other day, uh, she gets home. I said, where's your paper at? Uh, Miss Amber forgot. Uh. I'm like, Miss Amber forgot. You know, I got her phone number. I can call her. No, no, she forgot. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to call her. <laughs> so I said, well, where's your paper at? And finally she looks at me and she goes, at school. I said, did you leave it at school? Yeah. I'm like, where'd you leave it at? The trash can. <laughs> <laughs> so that a girl. <laughs> at least she's honest. Yeah. She is honest. You know yeah. what? That's pretty good. That's pretty sweet. So, yeah, so she left in the trash can. So I called Miss Amber, and we just, like, die laughing. I was like, you almost get your tablet just for doing that. Like, <laughs> I don't I'm, – I'm pretty happy that you, like, tried pulling the wool over our eyes. And I like it. So we called Miss Amber, and she's like, oh, yeah, it's right here in the trash can. I can see it. Like, it's sitting here. I get the trash can. She took it out of her bag before she got left school and dropped it in the bag. <laughs> That so that's her so version funny. of turning an F into an A. Like yeah, I did, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dog ate my homework yeah, kind exactly. of deal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so paper. good. Yeah. I, I, I will. I am so excited for Elsie to develop more of a personality. I mean, she's two. She's got a bunch of personality, but at this point, it's all just like wild, feral child energy more so than it is like an actual personality. Yeah. With like, and and most of it revolves around her her lack of being able to speak the same language I do. Mm -hmm. But I I mean, that is something I am so excited for is to see that to start to develop as she gets more and more words. And I mean, she's, she's, she's having, you know, two, three, like, two or three word sentences that she can communicate with, but it's not full-blown conversations. It's a lot of uh, 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 pointing at things. Yeah. We, we've been trying to encourage her to use her words. but Yeah, you say that, but then it's like, Liam, he's pretty good at communicating now, and and they, you know, they don't know how to really lie yet. <laughs> so he's brutally honest. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, it, so you just wait till you get to the stage because Allie, she's like, she's like, you know, Bubby, she's like, you want to you wanna come cuddle with me? No. <laughs> okay. Did you have a good day? No. <laughs> it's just like all these like questions yeah. that you ask. Do you want to elaborate on that or you just, just want to say like, no? No. Or, yeah, it's just like like Eric was saying, like, you know, you'll ask me like, well, what'd you do with this? Threw it in the trash. Threw it on the floor. You know, I left, I left, <laughs> I left breakfast over there underneath the couch. Okay, are you going to go get it? No. And it's like, dude, like, no. but again, no. that's, that's like... <laughs> Like an adult would be like, oh no, I don't know where that went, but they're like, yep, this is what I did with it, but you gonna fix it? No, yeah, not probably not. Fix it. So no, I don't think so. So yeah, you just wait till you get hit that brutally honest stage, and and uh, oh dude, I can't wait. Uh, it's, it's fun. Good, good, bad, or indifferent. I can't wait for her to develop that personality because yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, Liv and I both don't have any personality at all, and so I'm not at all yeah. excited to see yeah. how <laughs> terrifying that is when that actually comes out in oh, combination. Dude, it's fun, though. It's fun. Uh, it's going to be a blast. When they get to be eight, they don't read social cues, so they'll tell, tell the story, just keep going and keep going and keep well, going. Well, I still... Like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I'm 34 and still haven't learned that. Um, so, speaking of rambling... Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, Never ramble. the last and final thing that we do in every episode is we got to talk about our dad jokes. Right. Um, and I don't want to put our guest on the spot right out of the gate, so I'll, uh, I'll make Derek go first. You should have. He was talking about how much of a jokester he was. Uh, right? Well, <laughs> trust me. As Okay, I, get, I just got to tell this story. So, we recently had Dave Schomburg on the podcast, and and Dave is in that poker group we referenced earlier. So I'm out of a hand. I stand up to go use the restroom and I go walk into the bathroom in Eric's basement. And I didn't turn the lights on, but there's still the light from the hallway yeah, and I'm standing there a taking bit. a leak. Yeah. And, and I'm looking at the pictures standing over the toilet or sitting on the wall over the toilet. And I'm like, that's that's Dave Schomburg's wife. <laughs> what hey, in the Blith. hell? And it's and it's Blith <laughs> like and it's there's Blith cam over yeah Blith cam but for real they're looking at me as I'm taking a leak and she's got a little like ha 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 look how funny it is look how small it is and she's pointing a finger look on her face and 
I of course immediately walk like <laughs> shake it off, finish the uh, and then walk into the, the the other room and I'm like, "Hey, how long have those pictures of Blip been in your bathroom?" <laughs> and and Dave whips his head and goes, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> So it turns out Dave had made some comments. What was the story there? So we had pictures. You know, when you have a first baby, we take pictures every month. Sure. So we have pictures of Avery all over the place of the house when she was born. So mm-hmm. one of them above the toilet, we'd put some pictures of her, like in a, like a bathroom scene, like sure. tub, you know, fake bubbles, duck, rubber ducky, things like that. So we had it above <laughs> the toilet. So Dave comments one time. He walks out. He's like. Dude, you gotta do something about those pictures. I can't use the restroom and look at your daughter at the exact same time. Like, there's something wrong here. So instantly in my head, I'm like, well, what can I replace those pictures with? Yeah, yeah. I know the perfect thing to replace those pictures with. Pictures of his wife. Luckily, Blitz was gracious enough to send me the pictures. Only after I sent her ones of me doing the poses she wants. So she has blackmail on me too. So it's yeah. not like I'm the only one that's got pictures of her in funny situations. She's got something from me. That too. was funny last night. Oh god. Oh, but not to like not to like, you know, overhype your dad joke or anything, but that was Primo, right. that was really right. good, got really, him. really good. Got jokes him. Are, yeah, <laughs> jokester work there. So, but, uh, what but do you yeah, got? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, are, are you are you from Springfield? I am. Okay. Uh, and Brian, he he touts that he's tenth <laughs> generation Green County Springfieldian, <laughs> East Side, blah blah blah. We've all heard it twenty times. Anyways, um, it's fifth generation. Thank you very oh, much, Green sorry. County. Not so much. Sorry, Green. sorry. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> Uh, you know we have we have a local newspaper, Springfield News Leader. Right? The News Leader. Yep. Uh, did you guys know that we actually used to have two different news newspapers? No. Yeah. So there's Springfield News Leader, mm-hmm. right? But then there was also the Queen City Gazette. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it was it was a pretty big newspaper from from what I heard and what sure. I read about it. But unfortunately, it did go out of business. You guys know why? No. Mm-mm. It had too many issues. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's good. <laughs> that's too many issues. That is ridiculous. That's so good. Nice work, buddy. Good, yeah. good setup too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What do you got? All right, now you've heard that piece of shit. What do you got? <laughs> you can only go up from here. Exactly. Yeah. That was good. I liked it. I ran this one by my wife, and she's like, oh, "I don't know, Mike. It's a dad joke, man." I'm like, "Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you know. It's supposed to be terrible." Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I mentioned I recently went to work for the blood center. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you know, I'm going to my first day. I'm like, man, I should do a better job about giving blood. Like. You know, I can't work here and not give blood. Sure, sure. You know, it helps the bottom line. Like, it helps the community. Like, let's yeah. do it. So I come walking in there one day, and I go, I'm going to give blood. And they go, okay, here's some questionnaires. And so I start filling out, and they go, they start asking some weird questions. I'm like, why are you asking these questions? The first one's like, why did you bring a bucket of blood? Whose blood is it? And how did you get it here? <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of <laughs> donation. <laughs> yeah. No, nope. did not expect the bucket of blood to come in. <laughs> That's a serial killer dad joke for those of you playing the home game. <laughs> it's not where I thought you would go with that. Good. That was That's good. really good. <laughs> what, uh, what do you got, Brian? So, Chaney and I are kind of in the real estate business. You know, he he lends the money, I insure the homes. Um, but I, I I happen to have a tenant, or excuse me, I happen to have a. Uh, a landlord insured and uh, he was telling us a story about he went into um, one of his rentals and he, he walked into the room and he saw a group of 10 ants like in the floor just 10 of them it was very strange <laughs> running around frantically in the floor um, and, and he felt really bad about it and so because he, they, they were unhoused but like within his house and so he's like well I'll make them a little cardboard house to live in so it's a nice place um, so that technically makes him a landlord, and they are his ten ants. <laughs> and you said mine was bad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, oh, was, that, that one was so uh, bad it made me laugh. That was for yeah. you. That was for you. <laughs> was so one bad. of these days we need to do like a special episode where we do the whole like dad joke off. Oh, have you seen that? Laugh. To see the guy. Have you oh, seen those videos? Laughs first. Those Who's videos it? on like YouTube and stuff where it's like guys sitting across the table trying to tell dad jokes to each other with a straight face without. It, was it Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell? Yes, that did those that? Are so funny. <laughs> Just oh, absolutely I don't know how they hilarious. Faces as long as they did. God, like, we need to do. We need. We need to make a special episode about that one of these days. So. Well, that kind of brings us to the end, unless there's anything else we think we should talk about. I don't think so. I yeah, think we nailed it. Awesome. Well, I do want to take a quick second to say thanks to all the uh, the decent dads out there watching yeah. the show. Um, we continue to get good feedback in the DMs. We continue to get fe- good feedback um, in the comments. So please continue to shout us out in both places. Tell us your stories. 
Tell us your dad hacks. Tell us your dad jokes. We want to know them. Um, mostly so we can steal them and use them on the show. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, form of flattery. Exactly. Yeah, that's the theft. <laughs> um, but we also just recently crossed 350 subscribers on YouTube. Um, we're getting dangerously close up. to like 500,000 views across all of our different uh, shorts and ch episodes and everything. Uh, so really appreciate everybody. Um, I, s I think I said 500. I meant 50,000. Yeah, we'll go 50, five hundred sounds uh, better. It's it's we'll fifty thousand. It's not five hundred thousand. I do math real good. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. CPA. Yeah. Um, but we really appreciate everybody who's checking it out. And we hope you're enjoying it. So, um, without further ado, a, a goo. A goo. Without further ado, way to go, decent dad. Yeah. Nice work. Way to go, buddy. Thanks. So, uh, thanks so much. We'll uh, we'll see you all next time. A goo. A goo. How about that? That was good, huh? Without further ado. And the only other piece of coaching I can offer is maybe don't stare at that little viewfinder because I catch myself doing that if oh. I can see it. <laughs> Brian likes to look at himself. <laughs> I like to look at him too. That's so. a good looking guy right <laughs> there. Peak athlete that I am. Right. Just checking myself out. Conversation well, like. Me up when people are like yeah. I'm, I'm like nervous or I'm worried about it. I'm like, oh, these, these are your stories. <laughs> <laughs> these are your stories. And there's yeah. a couple of dumbasses listening to you tell those stories. <laughs> yeah. so I'm sure everybody will be yeah. fine with it.